Hey guys, it's Lisa. I've got a question for you. Do you know what percentage of people that come to your website actually click on this navigation or these tabs on your navigation? For example, what percentage of people go to your homepage versus people go to this particular category or whatever you have linked here? Do you know the breakdown? Most people don't. Most people have an idea of what pages get the most traffic, but they don't really pay attention to the path that the visitor takes or what they click on. And that's what I want to talk about in this video because what you have here and what is in your main navigation can drastically impact how long people stay on your site, what they view on your site, and even how much money you'll make with your site. And a lot of people ignore this stat, but I have a feeling after today, you won't anymore. So let's get started. Now, I am not a Google Analytics power user. Like I use it all the time, but there are so many reports in this tool. I use the basic ones, but there's so many more metrics and especially when it comes to like social media and stuff. But there is one report that I do check in on from time to time. But unfortunately, I haven't been checking in on it enough because I'll explain that in a minute, but it's called in page analytics and you get to it by going to content and then in page analytics. So what this report does is it shows you where your clicks are going. So 11% of people who came to my site clicked on this link, are SEO plugins overrated? And this is the highest percentage for these links over here because this is my latest post. It makes sense, right? People want to see what I wrote about most recently. Now you might say these percentages are very low. Why is it only 7%? And then some of them are like 2% or 1%. Well, the more links you have on your page, the more the percentages are going to be spread out. So it's just a math thing. So if you've got a thousand links on your page, then of course you're going to see a lot more lower percentages. If I only had three links on a page, then these percentages would be a lot higher. So these numbers are all relative. So I'm not necessarily as concerned about how high or low they are. I'm looking at how they compare to the rest of the links on the page. But what was most interesting about this is that People are clicking on this content over here, which is located in my right nav a little ways down, way more than they were clicking some of the tabs on the top navigation. If you remember, my blog used to just list most of my categories across the top, which, you know, it's a traditional blog. This is where I talk about the latest and greatest news in internet marketing, making money online. And so my content is organized in a blog like format right? But according to analytics, people weren't even clicking on some of these categories. So it was like a wasted space. People are coming to my site and they're looking for what I wrote about recently. So for me, it makes sense to make this easier to find. So not only do I have the latest post over in the right column, but I just added a new tab called what's new. And so when you click it, it takes you to a page that shows my most recent content. And this is very easy to set up in WordPress. So you go to posts, categories, and then you just create a brand new category. And you can call it whatever you want. You can call it what's new. But if you do what's new, make sure you take out the apostrophe because it will not work. So I think I just called mine news. So then what you would do is assign your new content to this category so it will automatically show up when someone clicks the new tab. And then obviously you have to add the tab to your navigation. And for those of you guys that don't know, you can do this very easily with WordPress as well. You just go to appearance, menus, click the plus, create a brand new menu, and then you can come down here and choose what pages and categories you want to show on your menu. Very easy to do. Now I know what you might be thinking. Okay, so what happens when this content gets old? It's not going to be new anymore. As long as my latest content is at the top, that's all I really care about. But you know, over time, I would come in and edit some of these and take off the news category so these older posts won't show up here. But that's not really a big deal. The other thing I discovered from analytics is that a lot of my content, at least my most popular content in terms of visits and comments, it's usually those posts that are beginner oriented because I have a lot of beginners that come to my sites. Makes sense, right? So I never had a page on this blog that 
is like an all encompassing page for beginners that want to get started. I know it's kind of crazy that I never did that. I've had articles here and there, but never an all encompassing page. And so that's what I created. So if you go to this page, you will see, I think WordPress told me there's like 3,000 words. It's a long article, but it's got everything somebody just getting started would want to learn about. I talk about the site's layout. I talk about topic choice. I talk about, as you can see, I linked this the brand new video that I put out a couple weeks ago that talks about keyword research and mistakes people make. I talk about um, the kinds of topics that do better, site maps, um, understanding search engine optimization today as SEO has changed so much. I talk about Google penalties, avoiding getting penalized, um, other ways to bring traffic and Google AdSense, selling and writing an ebook, all of the things people would want to learn about if they're new to all this, creating a membership website with WordPress, all of these things. So again, staying on top of those analytics reports and really studying what people are doing can really teach you a lot about how you need to structure your content. Another page that is very popular on this site, and actually when I had my old navigation, this link right here was the most clicked link on this whole navigation, even more than my other categories. People want to know what tools I use on my sites. This is a page that everybody should have on their site. We all have products that are associated with our topics. You don't have to have a site like I do. I mean, if you have a site, for example, on home decor, there are products that people are going to buy when they're going to redecorate their home. So you would create a page that lists some of the great products that you recommend. And of course, you would link to them using your affiliate links. This is one of my highest generating pages on my site. So it's a good thing that it's actually one of my most popular pages because when people come here, a lot of times they buy things. For example, the Genesis lifestyle thing. Because I use it, I promote it all the time, people like it. Um, I make quite a bit of money just from this link alone. And I even have a video showing people you know, how to use it. So this is a page I think everyone should create, you know, list all of the products that you use. Um, don't always tie things to affiliate links. You also want to put some free things in there because obviously everything that you use is not paid. There are some great free resources out there as well. You want to kind of mix it up, but this is a great page to have on your site. And then finally, I do have two links to categories still remaining on my nav. When I was looking at analytics, these two categories were clicked the most. And most people come to my site because they want to learn how to make money online. They want to learn how to build traffic. So it just makes sense to leave these categories you know, where they are because that's what people want to read about. So the take home here is just because you have a blog, it doesn't mean you have to just link to your categories on your main navigation. Study your analytics and see what people are doing, what they're clicking to give you an idea of the kind of information they're looking for. And of course, always have a search box visible. So if they can't find something, they can at least search for it. Now I have to say this, this is what works for me. That doesn't mean that you have to copy and do exactly what I'm doing. I am making these decisions based on what Google Analytics told me. It's important for you to do the same. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I already have all of my latest content on my homepage. Why do I need another tab? For me, this blog is not a search engine dependent site. I get more traffic from social media, RSS readers, email, that kind of thing. So most people who enter this site are coming and landing on an internal page, not necessarily my home page. So for me, I'm looking at analytics and making these decisions based on what people are doing on my site. If you don't feel like you need this tab, then you won't do that. So I don't want anybody to think that this is something that you have to do. I want to emphasize, do what's best for you based on what the analytics say but definitely check out that in-page analytics report because I have a feeling a lot of you guys are going to be surprised at what people are clicking and what they are not clicking. I was wasting a lot of space with my navigation because I had tabs up there that people weren't interested in. So you definitely want to check that out. So thanks for watching you guys and I'll see you later.